Have you ever discovered an author in a series that really redefines your view of a genre? Well, Ken Follett did that for me. In today's video, I want to rank the series by Ken Follett called the Kingsbridge series. Ken Follett, if you've never read him, uh, he got started writing books about World War II. Many of them became bestsellers almost overnight. To date, he has sold over 180 million copies of his books, which is really saying something. He has a bunch of really amazing writings, some of them about World War I, World War II. Some absolutely fantastic books, but the ones that captured my imagination are his Kingsbridge series. This is a series that takes place from the Viking Age era in England all the way up until the Industrial Revolution. He started writing it in 1989 and just finished last year in 2023, the culmination of that series. And this series is groundbreaking in so many ways. And if you like anything that is political thriller, that is cultural exploration, that is social upheaval, that is historical fiction, um, this series is for you. This is a series that doesn't follow the letter of history, so to speak, but it really sticks to some major themes and developments and the chaos that happened in England from the Viking era of the 900s all the way up until the Industrial Revolution into the 1800s following this one area that is developed from a little river hamlet all the way into an industrializing city. And it is very fascinating, especially as a AP world history teacher, uh, there's many themes from this story that resonate with me and I try to help express my students. So if you've ever read these books, uh, today I want to rank them from my least favorite, none of them are bad, uh, but ranking them from last to first and you might uh, not be surprised about what my number one is, but let's begin. And just so you know, this will be a spoiler-free review. There will be some themes that are discussed that shouldn't come as a major surprise, but just so you're aware, there shouldn't be anything major discussed. Coming in at number five of this five book series is A Column of Fire. This is the third book that Ken Follett wrote in the Kingsbridge series. I gave it a 3.5 reading uh, for a variety of reasons, but it does also highlight some very pivotal moments in England's history. This book takes place in the late 1500s to early 1600s during a period of European religious wars, many of it wars of the extremes between Catholics and Protestants following the Protestant Reformation. We see very famous characters like Bloody Mary, Elizabeth I, persecution of Catholics and Protestants in England. We experience the St. Bartholomew Day Massacre in France where Catholics butchered Protestants throughout the streets of Paris and other places in France. Other events like the Spanish Armada come about during this book as you follow characters who experience this firsthand or from a distance. We see Mary Queen of Scots, her story that ends later in a non-spoiled fashion, I don't want to say. We see the very famous gunpowder plot, and if you don't know about the gunpowder plot, this guy, you should recognize that. This book I would describe kind of like a slow-paced spy thriller, so to speak. This one for me didn't hit as well because a lot of the themes that came about in it were very familiar from previous books. You're gonna see that as a common thing with Ken Follett in this series that I mentioned. And it's much slower paced. It doesn't really take place at Kingsbridge, which is the city that the series is known for. And you flash back to it periodically, but it just doesn't have the same note and tone. It is still a very good book but it just feels off compared to the rest of the series. And that is why I give it a 3.5 and it is my number five. Coming in at number four in the last book that Ken Follett wrote in this series, The Armor of Light, which was just published last year, to a lot of positive reviews. However, for me, it's a four out of five because it just didn't, again, have everything new about it, but it definitely was a step up from book number three. This book takes place in the late 1700s to early 1800s during England's Industrial Revolution. And we see the development at this time of machines like the spinning jenny and the steam engine and how it transforms everyday life for an, the average citizen in England. We see the French Revolution take place in the anti-Republican sentiments of England at this time and the fear of something like that happening, like a reign of terror in England. We experience the Napoleonic Wars from a distance and then up close and personal leading up to Waterloo and viewing Napoleon's final defeat. Where this book shines is highlighting the cultural, economic, and social upheavals 
of the Industrial Revolution. As you experience class warfare and the impact of these new machines, you see the Luddites come about who are breakers of machines because they objected to their jobs being taken by these machines that are just run by this steam power. There's some beautiful pros in this, some, some amazing pivotal characters who you kind of don't see the way that their story ends coming. And it's, it's very fascinating and very interesting to read. Uh, again, there's some repeated themes and some low-hanging fruit that are kind of taken by Ken Follett in this with some of his villains. And so it's a strong book, uh, but definitely for me, uh, number four. Coming in at number three for me is The Evening and the Morning, a prequel book set during the Age of the Vikings that I give a very solid 4.5 to. Set at the dawn of the 11th century, we experience Viking and Welsh raids throughout England. We experience true medieval life coming out of the Dark Ages, and we see an isolated poor hamlet where we see farming and rural life with eel farms and uh, ferrymen and tiny inns that are experiencing hardship. Uh, we see church and political intrigues with the illegal melting down of, of relics in creation of coin illegally and just a lot of these themes that are very fascinating to see. In this book we do see the building of the King's Bridge and of the Priory which becomes a major uh, setting for most of the books in this series. We experience some class division and warfare but we see a lot of very interesting developments as you see the true relationships of this time period that nobility would have with each other, that the poor class would have with each other, and at the time, ways in which the poor could rise up in rank depending on their skill and what they put in. So this is a very amazing book. We see some amazing church, political, cultural uh, themes that are very nuanced and very interesting to read and we see the development of the series of Kingsbridge places like Leper Island which becomes a key point in this series and kind of how it got its name and this is a very strong addition to this series. Coming in at number two for me is World Without End. This is the second book in the Kingsbridge series and I give it a 4.9 out of 5. Almost a perfect score and you'll see why at the end. World Without End is set during the 1300s during the Black Plague time period. Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! And we see a lot of religious controversies regarding the treatment of the plague. Some people believe it came from God, some people trying to figure out the, uh, the natural causes of it. We see an architect who uh, rebuilds King's Bridge, the bridge after the bridge collapses, and then expands the cathedral after some weaknesses are found. Uh, we see a lot of political uh, chaos at this time as there is blackmail with the throne at stake. This is a book that has a lot of fresh plots and fresh themes coming from the first to the second book. And it is absolutely amazing, the time period and what it embraces with the storylines, with the different characters. It is almost a perfect book for me, except one thing and one development is we see the architect as he goes through a growth pattern that is not exact, but is very similar to the growth of one of the characters in the very first book. And so that is why I knocked this down to a 4.9. It should come then as no surprise that number one for me is The Pillars of the Earth, the very first book in the series that was written back in 1989 and took the world by storm. There's a mini series that was made about it, and this book has sold the most of almost any Ken Follett book. Set during a time of anarchy in the middle of the 1100s, during the time of what was called the sinking of the white ship, William the Conqueror's grandson, I believe, uh, dies in a ship crossing, and civil war breaks out between the closest heirs, and it culminates with the assassination of Archbishop Thomas Becket, who is a very pivotal character in English history. I give this rating of 5.0. This is, for the first book in this series, the perfect start, because it's the beginning of understanding Kingsbridge. You see the Priory, you see the Cathedral. Um, you see characters that come about with architecture, with discovery of the changing of architecture from the classical period to the Gothic cathedral time period. This blew my mind when I read it back around in about 2011 when I was getting done with college. And we see the hardships of the poor. We see the corruption of the church. We see the corruption of the nobility that comes about. But we also see 
the honorable in the church. We see the honorable of the nobility. And so this is a book that you see humanity at its cross section. As I said, this series is not accurate history, but it takes historic events and themes and very accurately relates the emotion and sometimes the chaos and the beauty from the time period. Can I just say that Prior Philip is the GOAT. If you have any idea about this series, you will know that Prior Philip is probably one of the most beloved characters of this series. When you pick up this book, you will probably not want to put it down, but I mean, it is a fairly massive read at about 980 pages, so I doubt you will read it in one setting, but I can pretty much guarantee if you like any of the things that I have mentioned or are just interested in human interest stories, this book is for you. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is a masterpiece series that overall, I will give this series a 4.5 any day. It has its weak points, but the overall arc of this story, of this series, is just so masterful and amazing. It has its weaknesses, the low-hanging fruit of corrupt church officials that comes over and over and over. The relationships of the poor, uh, the poor landless man falling in love with the rich noble daughter who is married to a beast of a man and then having a love of stuff so that that comes up over and over and there's a reason people love those tropes but it feels a little overdone that is what brings the series down for me but the variety of events the variety of characters the variety of experiences just is masterful in this series Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every single view. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all those things. Uh, if you wanna see so far my most successful video, uh, right here I did a from memory review of Shogun before the, t the TV series came out, and right here will be another one of my videos that YouTube recommends. So thank you so much, God bless.